Hello and welcome back to The Wandering Wind. Welcome back to my podcast, The Truth Is. Today's going to be a bit of a rough topic because most people don't like talking about this, especially in the church. And that is that the truth is, it's not always easy. Because it's not. People will try and fool you into thinking that it's all going to be unicorns and rainbows and butterflies and cotton candy, as my sponsor loves to say. But honestly, the the truth of the matter is there are a lot of things out there that cause the life of a Christian to be rough. Now, I'm not saying that it's always bad or that it's always tough. We do have moments where it's easier, but... It doesn't mean that when we come across difficulties, oh, well, God's abandoned me. Oh, God's forsaken me. Oh, I must not be good enough. No, it just means you're going through a bit of trial. Why would you expect any less? You know, um, I think about how um, sometimes since the, the enemy can't get to me anymore through my mind as much, he'll get to me through my family. He'll cause my family get to go through difficulties, and that riles me up because why would you why why would you get my mom involved in this? She doesn't have any part of this. Well, yes, yeah, she does. She's part of your circle of influence, and so therefore, if he, if the enemy can influence her, he can influence you through her because that's just how it is, you know. Um, a friend of mine no longer gets frustrated by the enemy, but when his sisters get up in his face, it still kind of riles him up a bit because it, it, I mean, maybe not to the extreme that it used to, but, you know, there are still days where it's like, really? And so he has to shut it down because otherwise it'll get bad. But just because you're following Christ doesn't mean the road's going to be easy. Jesus even directly addresses this when he says, Look, the world hates me. If the world hated me, why would it be any different for you? Because you're not greater than me. You know, um, and then he goes on to say something about how the servant is not greater than the master, which is true. Very true. When a servant is given an order, or when a, when an employee, to bring it into today's terms, is given an order, you can't just say no. If if you want to keep your job, you gotta do what he said, what it what your employer tells you to. Same thing with anything else, you know. If Jesus asks, well, if Jesus gives you marching orders to go preach the gospel, baptize, and make disciples, and you don't do that, you're out of his will. But at the same time, you know, um, with that being said, you know, sometimes we uh, we think, oh, well, I shouldn't have to deal with this. I'm a Christian now. I shouldn't have to deal with people looking at me and seeing the old me. Well, how long have you been a Christian? A couple of years. How long have you been alive? 30-some. 30, 30 well, they've known you... They've known you longer as the old you than they have as the new you. Why would they expect any, why would you expect them to act any different? So on and so forth, you know. It's, <laughs> I say it this way because it's funny, but there are people out there that will only see you as the new you in a moment where they need the new you. It's the truth. There are so many people out there that won't see who you are now until they need who you are now. Because they, 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 they're they not looking for you as you are now. They're looking for the old you so that they can point out and say, Ha, huh, I knew you never changed. Ha, huh, I knew you were still the same person as always. Ha, huh, I knew you were still the, the same grump as all, whatever, you know. People still, there are still people that I know from my past that look at me and go, aren't you a drunk? And I'm like, no, I haven't been, I haven't drank since 2019. 
well now 2021 22 21 21 20 and 21 yep because this year will be three years i've been dragging almost three years they're like no i'm like yep well i mean i don't see it yeah well of course you won't you you know me longer as a drunk than you knew me then you've known me sober so of course but it's because they haven't gotten to know the new me. They've only known who I used to be. So at the same point, you know, if things aren't easy, it's not because you haven't done right. You know, it's not because you haven't done right. It's because honestly, at the end of the day, you're, you're, you're experiencing growing pains. You know, you remember when you were a teenager, if you went through this thing, you had now, I don't remember growing pains as much because I was already fat when I was about 12 years old. And so my joints were already kind of achy most of the time. And so if I did have growing pains, it didn't make much of an impact because I was always in pain. But if you remember what it was like going through your teenage years and having the growing pains, especially if they were severe, because I know some stories of people that have had them so badly they needed to have actual painkillers for it. Um, did you grow through it? Yeah. You got taller, you got broader, you got whatever. You're, um, you know, you grew. And so if you're going through growing pains, why would you expect it not to hurt? If you're, if you're, if you're growing and you don't have pain, is it really growth? Or is it just bloating? <laughs> Um, probably not the best, <laughs> probably not the best of ways to put it, but honestly, that's one of the ways that I could think about it for a second. But yeah, if you're, if you're not, if you're growing, but you're not hurting from it, then it's just bloating. It really is. And believe me, I know all about bloating. I've got about 65 pounds of bloat on me right now. <laughs> uh. But honestly, there's a whole lot of people out there that will go, oh, well, God wants you to be successful. God wants you to be happy. God wants you to, God doesn't want you to be anything other than surrendered and serving him. If you are anything other than that, and you're not sinning, then count that as a blessing from God, but don't count it as a, as a, as a guarantee from God. Because just as quickly as he gives it, he can take it away. Look at the story of Job. He was a man that served God faithfully. And one day the devil goes to God and says, Hey God, can I tempt your servant Job here? Because he he only serves you because you've given him all these things. Sure, go ahead. And everything is wiped out in a second. Everything is wiped out in a blink of an eye. And... Job goes from one of the richest people in the world to being one of the poorest. And he still praises God even in the middle of the suffering because he knows the truth about it. He knows the truth is it's not easy. The truth is it's not always easy. And sometimes it's not easy at all, ever. There are some people that are so surrendered to Jesus and yet are under such strenuous pain. Most of the time, you know, a, a young lady from our area lost her battle with cancer last year. She was only 17 years old. <clears throat> and the amount of faith that young lady had, they had to have the, have the funeral at the high school because there were so many people that came to honor her. Because her faith shined so brightly, even in her pain, that she touched loads of people. There are still people that remember her and that honor her and that love her enough to carry out what she was doing. There are people out there in nations like China 
who have more faith and are more on fire for Jesus than some of us here in America. You know why the prosperity gospel has been so successful here in America? You know why? It's because Americans are comfortable and and content with whatever it is they can get here. And if that requires sacrifice on the on the level of spirituality, they'll give it wholeheartedly. But if it, but if their spiritual life requires sacrifice in their physical life, they're not as they're not as geared for that. I can't say that I'm much better. I am a bit of a um a bit better than I used to be, but I'm not where I'd like to be. I'd like to be so surrendered that I can live on, live on nothing but honey and insects and wear, and wear camel's hair and live in the desert. <laughs> Just call me 21st century John the Baptist. But, you know, I need... I don't need my cre- my creature comforts, but I enjoy some of them. I don't I don't indulge in too many. But it would be really difficult to not have some of the equipment I have in order to be able to preach and and teach you guys. It would be really difficult to not have um some of the benefits of living in a first world country. And still be able to do some of the things I do. But if God were to ever call me to do that. It might not be easy. But I'd say yes Lord. How can I do this? Please make this possible. So the truth is. If God if God doesn't make our lives easy just because we're Christians then does God make things hard because we're Christians? The answer is no. But God also doesn't prevent the hardships. Again, look back at Job. Um, when, When Satan first goes to God and says, can I test him? God says, yeah, go ahead and strike anything he has. Just don't touch him physically. And then when when Satan has taken everything from him and can't do anything more to him and he still doesn't curse God, he has to go back to ask, well, now can I touch him? Yeah, okay. And so then he gives him painful sores and all kinds of issues that cause him agony. But God says, but you can't kill him. God has the final say in what happens to you. Unless he gives the okay, Satan can't destroy you. Be comforted in that. But that also means that if you're going through stuff, it can't be against the will of God. Because the will of God is that even if we go through trials and temptations, That we overcome. The Bible says this. The Bible says this. I will botch this if I don't look it up. You will not be tempted. Beyond what you can. And Bible Gateway, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. And this is out of the NLT. It says, The temptations in your life are no different from what others experience. Get this here. The temptations in your life are no different from what others experience. And that's anything. You know, no matter what it is that you're going through, 
no matter what it is that you're going through, there is someone who's been in your spot. You know, I, um, I recently read a story in the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous where it talks about how, um, this guy had been preached to, analyzed, counseled, and yelled at. But no one had ever told him, I've been where you are and I know the way out. Sometimes people will ask, do you know what it's like? And if you can say yes, and I know how you can get out, that gives him so much hope. But continue on, and it says, the temptation in your life is no different from what others experience, and God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. But when you are tempted, he will show you a way out so that you can endure. He will not make the he will not allow the temptation to be more than you can bear, but he will give you a way out. You know, in those in, in every public building, there are those glowing exit signs pointing to the the exit doors for emergencies, right? And they have them everywhere. You can see the exit sign all day long. But until you decide to head towards the door and go out, that's all that you get is seeing the sign and not acting on it. God will provide a way so that you can endure. But you have to take that path. He's not going to do it for you. He's not going to do it for you. Listen to me. Listen to me. I don't know who needs to hear this. God gives you the tools but you had to pull it out of your toolbox and use the darn, use the darn thing. I got a whole big box of tools for working on computers, and I've got another another smaller to toolbox for working on my bike. If something breaks on either a computer or on my bike, and I don't grab the tool that I need and fix that thing, it's not getting fixed. It won't fix itself, and no one else is going to fix it. I had to grab that tool out of my toolbox and go and fix the issue or else it never gets fixed. In the same way, God gives us the tools to fix the things in our lives that need fixing, to address the issues in our lives that are wrong. But until we pick up that toolbox and use the tools in it, and what is our toolbox? What is our toolbox? It is the Word of God. It is prayer. And it is community with other believers. Three tools in our toolbox. We have the Bible, the Word of God, the source of, knowledge, of all spiritual knowledge. We have prayer, a direct hotline to the Father of lights, to the King of kings, to the Lord of lords himself, to God eternal. And then we have Christian community. Other brothers and sisters that have been through the same things we have been that we're going through. And know the way out. God provides these three tool, tools in our toolbox. And if we don't grab one of them, or all three of them at times, if it's that bad, it's only our fault. We only have ourselves to blame if we don't use the tools we're given. So, that's the truth. The truth is, it isn't easy. But it is possible. It's not easy. But it is possible through Christ who strengthens all of us. Thank you so much for listening, watching, sharing, subscribing, liking, commenting, being here, being out there, helping. It's good to have you here, and it's good to be here. I hope you're well. I hope you're doing all right. And I hope God is continuing, continuing to grow you in the knowledge and grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ, as our brother Paul once prayed for his people. Continue to do what you need to in order to grow. I will see you next time here on the Truth Is podcast. Thank you for being here.